So I have to move on. Uh, we are already due out on time. So now I would like to welcome Dr. Pooja Sarvajna to come across and give her valuable expertise. Uh, Dr. Pooja, can you hear us? Yeah, I can hear you. Am I audible? Yes, yes, ma'am. You are fit. Perfect. Please. Okay. Okay. So I is the most uh, precious of. uh senses in all our other six senses so today my topic is why my child can't see uh, treating visual processing disorder so today what i'm going to emphasize is on how does brain sees the visual milestones the clinical assessment of a child with cortical visual impairment uh, the assessment tools what i use regularly in my clinic and the intervent basic intervention part and we developed a vision therapy software for this uh, child with cortical visual impairment so that i'm going to show so how does a brain see basically here we can see some cluster of black and white blobs so this blobs is basically seeing if we will mix this blob and we will make a picture it will come as a familiar picture that is a cow's face so this is called vision so basically how uh, which part of our brain helps us to see so basically overall every part of our brain helps us to see so basically the earlier the conception is only from occipital lobe we get vision but that is that i'm going to my next slides will show what exactly happens so here the occipital lobes has activity uh, color vision and uh, visual field so now station 1 so i am going to divide the brain into different stations so first is our occipital lobe that is station 1 so basically it use as as a printer so what happens basically in a printer so the printer when we will put the image on the printer a picture exactly similar kind of picture with similar color contrast and the similar feels everything will come out so the primary processing of image the clarity of the picture that's called visual acuity so here we i'm giving an example of a of a like you can see a picture here a cl clear clarity picture of 2020 vision the child with cvi we will see the similar vision like around 20 by 200 you can color is faded so again first you can see a normal viewing the child with who is having cortical visual impairment they are going to see the image with in, uh, in the term of color they will see the color is a little faded and the contrast is gone so uh, another fourth one is visual field so basically first picture is shows a normal visual field and second picture shows a hemianopia so now the second station the second station is our parietal lobe so basically parietal lobe helps us for what analyzing the visual senses the or the ability to see second is the 3d mapping of the visual world and the third one is visual guidance or body movement so our station 2 posterior parietal lobe basically it helps as a mapper and doer so here in this example what it is, what we are showing the row arrow in the bird's eye so here other multiple things are there but still arjun can put exactly the row, uh, arrow in the bird's eye only in spite of other so many things are there this is exactly what the posterior parietal lobe helps us so there are multiple things maybe the posterior parietal lobe helps us to analyze overall visual senses uh, and it will helps us to go the same senses in our frontal uh, frontal lobe so now 
another two work of posterior parietal lobe that is the 3d internal mapping of the visual world and the body guidance so basically 3d internal mapping means uh, and the what is the body gui guidance basically body guidance means suppose uh, multiple objects are there in the table but i have to pick up the pencil from a certain distance with my right eye right hand so i the right hand will go and stop there and i'll take the pencil and my automatically my fingers will get separate and i will hold the pencil so this is how the body guidance work and the 3d mapping basically exactly the uh, without bumping any people any objects when a person can go exactly straight away uh, with uh, that that works so here i want to uh, give a small example of posterior parietal lobe see lot of people, lot of kids uh, in our clinic comes with the complaint of that the child is not able to walk properly or maybe the child vision is 66 but still child is bumping of the objects though the vision is 66 or they are uh, they are they like they are not able to see the stairs properly they are missing the stairs or if the chairs are also in front of them they will just miss up and they will just bump and go off so basically that point of time we need to think of that basically the ch child is having maybe something related to posterior parietal lobe and then depending upon that we have to do the intervention now the third one is uh, the temporal lobe that is like the, the works are different so basically it's it's like uh, identification of difficulty if the difficulty of recognizing of faces is called prosopognosia inaccurate identification of strangers agnesia alexia dyscalculia and agraphasia so basically what the time temporal lobe temporal lobe is basically it's it's a searching uh, it's basically a visual search so basically what happens in temporal lobe uh, suppose in google what we do in google we will write one uh, whatever we want to search we want to write in google and automatically that same thing will come come out from the google search correct exactly temporal lobes does that temporal lobes helps us to recognize object shape it's a root so if the child is having any problem in temporal lobe they will have the difficulty in recognizing the face object shapes and roots so in this temporal lobe difficulty recognizing face it's called prosopognosia inaccurate identification of stranger or familiar people difficulty recognizing the shapes is called agnosia letters called alexia numbers called dyscalculia more common after left sided dyscalculia is more common when the damage is on left side and since visual memory impaired tasks such as copying drawing may be difficult that is called agraphasia difficulty in remembering the things where it is uh, then root findings becoming very difficult if the child is having any or or, or whoever is having any uh, uh, damage related to right side then they will have definitely difficulty in searching of classroom maybe they will keep on uh, forgetting the route of the classroom from from where they, from their home to the classroom or classroom to other classroom they will keep on forgetting they will have a lot of difficulty in motion chain now i'm going to go uh, talk about little bit of visual milestone so uh, this is the uh, normal visual milestones so basically in 0 to 4 weeks in fine motor so i'm going to uh, divide into three parts like fine motor adaptive personal and social and language so in uh, age group of 0 to 4 weeks the child will start of following uh, from the center that is 90 degree off till the midline so from the side to the midline that is 90 degree off arc and in personal and social they will start of getting lot of interest in human face so i am having a very interesting video all can go and search it it is it is like lia mam's video and she tells that that is the most easiest treatment she does as uh, she did so basically one uh, like some weeks baby like two weeks baby and the mother is holding the baby very close to mother's uh, face and the baby is giving so make imitating mother so that way that comes from 0 to 4 weeks from 2 months the child will have similar response uh, so how we will respond the child the mother will respond or uh, some family to their face on the similar way at 3 months of age what it will happen what i told i told that 0 to 4 weeks the fine motor adaptive the child will only respond till 90 degree of arc that will combine to 180 degree of arc in 3 months of age they will complete respond to 180 degree of their circle at 4 months of age they will start of reaching or grasping a different objects and they will be very excited if you will give some new toys and in 5 months they will start of distinguishing the family or people and uh, then if you'll give them hands they will start of rejecting at 6 months of age now at 8 months of age they will start of their finger feeding and they will start of responding to their names when you will call them and explore the paddle finger with index finger at 9 month of age they will have lot of uh, uh, they will start of imitating nursery tricks at 10 months of age 
at 12 months of age they will start off any will hand over some request of some toys or something they will start off hand overing the toys at around 12 months of age and uh, they can do the uh, trading with shoe lace lacing they will put the shoe lace on the hole exactly at 24 months age and at 48 months they will start off picking the two lines and they will shirt uh, button up their shirts they will point the color on request so now uh, what is called visual function and what is called visual functional vision because when i'm talk talking a lot about brain and then uh, cortical visual impairment so it, it is basically what we are doing we are checking the functional vision not visual function so basically we are more keen on functional vision not visual function though we are when i'm doing assessment of, of for a child with cortical visual impairment or a child with uh, cerebral palsy or adhd or add anything but uh, or global developmental delay do i'm checking all the aspect of visual acuity visual feel color vision and contrast sensitivity but when i'll make their assess uh, intervention plan my ma major concentration of will be on functional vision because how they are functioning based, uh, on their regular basis so basically visual function means the uh, assessment of threshold of the different parameters that is vision acuity feels and color vision contrast and uh, we, we we have to do it each eye individually separately but in functional vision basically we do it binocularly to understand how the person uh, does their regular activities uh, in in their daily routine life there is uh, th there is no point of assessing up uh, a specific thing it's basically how they are functioning functional vision can be assessed uh, while the child is coming inside your room how the child's behavior how, what they are doing they are bumping in the objects or not how they are looking at you or not and the social smile different things includes in functional vision so now uh, comes to the clinical assessment part so basically first what i assess is the facial communication distance that the, at what exactly at what distance the child is giving facial communication uh, and i try to mention that in my file that where, at what distance the child is giving uh, facial communication and i start of changing my distance in different uh, different gaze and i will see exactly at what at what till the child is trying to follow my uh, face and how much is the tracking of tracking capability of the child then second will be visual acuity we majorly use uh, we we avoid to use teles acuity for the child with cortical visual impairment we try to use uh, lia paddles uh, fa fa facial puppet and other different tools then contrast sensitivity we majorly use hiding aid then visual field with lia wand color preference we do a uh, color preference test with uh, this uh, panel 16 test and we do with uh, we we do with all, all of all of that uh, lia rod cone adaptation test and a lot of other block color test then uh, we do different cognition skills eye movements and finally eye motor and sensory coordination after this we do all uh, retinal imaging that is called o oct so uh, vision and cognition cogn cognitive visual assessment tools so basically i'm going to show you a video uh, uh, so basically what all uh, visual and cognition tools we use we use lia grating lia wang for visual field hiding hiding for contrast lia rectangle li hiding expression lia puzzle cone adaptation and lia mailbox for cognitive skills so here i'm going to show you a video where i where uh, you um, i'm going to explain overall how we are doing the assessment and how we are planning for the intervention this child came to me around age of 2 uh, year with a complaint of uh, not giving true eye contact with mother and in the clean in the assessment of cortical visual impairment first we will check on the uh, tracking and the fixation with the help of light ball and then i'm doing dynamic retinoscopy to find the uh, lag of accommodation and depending upon the uh, lag of accommodation each child each child with cortical visual impairment how much lag is there depending upon that we prescribe them the glasses lia flickering wand to understand the visual fields lia paddle to do vision uh, visual assessment and this is the glasses what is like around whatever how much ever lag i got in retinoscopy i'm having some glasses with me like plus 3 plus 4 plus 5 and how much ever lag i will get it's a similar lag power i'll put, put it on the child's face and again i'll do redo the measurement after giving a 10 to 15 minutes minutes of adaptation time to the child. and then i'm performing hiding hiding for contrast sensitivity basically in contrast sensitivity we are hiding the smiley face and we are ask, we are just taking it out and we are seeing the child responds where the uh, face the child is responding to that face or not and here it's lia puzzle basically it's a psychoneurological test here we will start off with one puzzle and we will ask the child that to search the similar one 
and go back and put it on the same and this is uh, the child came after a month with with uh, only with glasses without vision therapy and with a binasal occlusion because child is having restriction of visual field and again we will repeat the similar kind of test to find it out that how much is the improvement after one month with our own glasses so basically i'm hiding the lia paddle and taking out and seeing how much the child is responding and this how the tools what basically every day we use in our clinic to uh, do a re assessment of cortical visual impairment so we do color vision test with uh, panel 16 test basically panel 16 test what we do we do a a, a a plot color that is the first one and then the child needs to match with the plot color with similar kind of colors so here the plot color and the child needs to make the similar kind of color and we are going to draw the a graph over here so next is a lia rectangle so i'm going to this is basically for the size uh, differentiating of size so basically i'm giving a size and the child needs to figure it out the from other things similar kind of size this is basically for cognition skills hiding expressions again the child needs to uh, you are giving one card and the child needs to figure it out uh, one so this is a much more complicated level we have to start off from two cards and then we have to go for this total eight cards now lia mailbox basically is the assessment of visual recognition of line orientation so basically you need to hold the mailbox in uh, straight horizontal vertical tilted oblique and all that and child needs to put it on this on this hole and uh, we need to basically we are just teaching the child the direction conception now comes to the intervention part uh, we start off basically with light stimulation so uh, we we do lot of light stimulation exercises basically we follow the rule of uh, that uh, tact, uh, tactopapinal pathway is just uh, with the attached with the retinal calcarine pathway next to that so if we can give entire thing to the child then the child vision develop much more faster so basically one vision therapist is working with the child to develop their uh, coordinations with the help of light stimulation now we help we use a lot of masden ball for uh, eye hand coordination so basically it's for eye hand coordination this child is a diff, uh, child with uh, uh, cvi with amblyopia so we started first with uh, both binocularly and uh, later on we shifted to uh, patching and give a uh, uh, masden ball so now cognitive vision therapy though the vision is maybe 2020 but the child will have a lot of difficulty in writing from board they will have a lot of difficulty in focusing they will have a lot of difficulty in eye hand coordinations so in this uh, this all things we do do lot of cognitive visual development here you can see the child is playing this is called parquetry blocks so basically there are different levels book of parquetry blocks and we will you start off with a basic level level 1 and slowly we will uh, go to the le other levels and this is co lia cone adaptation test Those so it is lia cone adaptation test we sometimes use it as a block game to uh, give them cognitive visual therapies and this is the uh, this is our my own software which developed by myself so the, here there are different options uh, where uh, where it starts from administrator a doctor can or a therapist can use a patient can use or you can use as a guest so if you'll uh, if you'll go in the and uh, uh, inside this there will be different different games it's for basically for eye hand coordinations and and they they are uh, like for, uh, obviously uh, the, this child they, there will be different pictures and then we, they have to memorize the thing this is in this one game is there it is called mastermind of perception in that there will be different pictures comes and the child needs to remember all the pictures and one point of time the pictures will vanish and the child needs to recollect the pictures and search it start from different different levels and this is most familiar to everyone that is pegboard so we inbuilt this pegboard in the software only it's much more easy the child needs to just find it out that's the red dot and similar red dot the child needs to find on the red line and they need to click it off and the automatically pegs will come on the on on top of that so here you can control the speed you can control how much stimulation you want and what color you want basically it is very important in this uh, in this software to uh, think about the color because if the child is having any kind of photosensitive epilepsy then the blue color and red color is contracted in the, uh, it is difficult to in induce that and the flickering light will be difficult because in the flickering sense the uh, seizures will increase so basically on that point of time we think uh, we, we correlate that with the mri report and eeg report if it's photosensitive seizures we try to give different kind of filters and depend with that we will give vision therapy we will but we will try to avoid different kind of flickering lights and all and in the software also there are a lot of customized things we can change it depending upon the child's brain condition so thank you uh, i'm if any queries any questions uh, thank you so much uh, dr pooja for the wonderful talk